Hey, Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium, and you're watching Skywatch Weekly. Well, this week, we're going to talk about the best meteor shower of the entire year. But first, I want to take a brief moment to say thank you. During this season of giving, the Adler Planetarium is looking to raise $50,000 by the end of the year to help support our online programs. Special thanks to two shining stars who helped us get closer to our goal this week, James Souse and Starlet Hawk. Thank you. You're helping us connect more people to the universe and to one another. If you're interested in donating and getting a shout out in a future episode, click the link at the end of this video. Well, believe it or not, this week we're experiencing the earliest sunsets of the year in the mid-northern latitudes. That's right, the sunsets right now are earlier than they will be on the shortest day of the year, December 21st. Now, the days are still getting shorter, but that's thanks right now to the sunrise time. That's getting later and later, and will continue to do so actually until early January. So right now, early sunsets, it's the best time of the year to get out early in the evening and check out the sights in the sky. Well, one of those sights is happening Sunday evening, December 13th. That's when the Geminid meteor shower peaks. So what makes this the best meteor shower of the year? Well, reason number one, lots of meteors. The number of meteors seen in the Geminids has been increasing over recent decades, and currently it averages more meteors per hour than the famous Perseids in August. From a very dark sky with a completely open view, you can expect to see upwards of 100 meteors per hour. But with any obstructions or light pollution, that number will go down. Reason number two, the moon phase. With any meteor shower, a bright moon can spoil the show, as was the case for last year's Geminids, and even this year's Perseids. The moon phase this time around is perfect, with the new moon occurring the next day, December 14th. And reason number three, an earlier start. Unlike other meteor showers where the peak occurs in the pre-dawn hours, the Geminids start to put on a show as soon as the sky is dark. The rate of meteors will definitely increase later in the night, but especially for those with young kids, as long as they're bundled up well, you can grab some time outside once it's dark, hopefully see some meteors, and be back inside for bedtime. The best way to see a meteor shower is lying on your back and looking straight up at the top of the sky, with as wide a view around you as possible. Of course, that's easier and probably more enjoyable on a warm summer night for the Perseids. Here in the Northern Hemisphere, the Geminids can be a bit of a chilly experience. Well, even before or after the peak, you can spot the constellation of Gemini in the evenings at this time of the year. It's rising in the east soon after sunset. Gemini will be just to the left of Orion the Hunter by about three hours past sunset. Orion's belt is the most obvious asterism or pattern of stars to look for in Orion. Then look for the bright orangish red star called Betelgeuse on his shoulder. If you point from the belt through Betelgeuse, you'll come to two stars that are pretty much the same brightness. You might even say they're twins. These are Pollux and Castor, the heads of the Gemini twins. And the radiant for the Geminid meteor shower will be just above their heads. This is the spot in the sky where all the Geminid meteors will appear to point back to, kind of like the spokes on a wheel. Once again, though, a meteor shower is best seen looking straight up in as open a sky as possible. We've seen this here with other meteor showers, how they're caused by the Earth moving through debris streams left by comets. The story of the Geminids is a little bit more mysterious. We have historical records of other meteor showers dating back centuries or even millennia, but the first appearance of the Geminids in the historical record isn't until 1862. And it wasn't until the 1980s that the probable parent object of the shower was found, the asteroid Phaethon. But wait a second, an asteroid? How could that produce a debris stream and a meteor shower? Well, this asteroid is special. Phaethon gets closer to the sun than any other named asteroid. Every one and a half years, it swings within 21 million kilometers of the sun. That's about 13 million miles, and only about a third of Mercury's average distance from the Sun. Astronomers have suggested that because of this close solar pass, the asteroid Phaethon fractures slightly during this close approach, and the dust produced in this fracturing makes its way into space. 
In fact, NASA's Stereo spacecraft imaged a short, dusty tail of Phaethon as recently as 2012. The current rate of dust ejection isn't nearly enough to count for so much material in Phaethon's orbit, but it is possible that it's ejected more in the past and is just currently rather quiet. Well, in any event, the Geminids are a fantastic, if chilly, meteor shower, so I challenge you to get out and see them for yourself. Even from light-polluted skies, you have a chance to see more than you might think. And if you have access to safe, dark skies, it could be quite a show. Any night this week, it's also worth going out at twilight and looking for the ever-closer pairing of Jupiter and Saturn in the southwest. We're less than two weeks out now from their closest pairing in the sky in centuries. Next week, we'll talk all about it and what you can expect to see. But until then, make sure to go out and see these two planets easily in a clear sky to the southwest. Well, that's what we have for you this week. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to keep up to date with all things going on in the sky. Also, follow the Adler Planetarium on social media. Happy meteor spotting, and we'll see you next week.